Welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about training your non-dominant hand. Mostly, why. <laughs> why we should do that as opposed to just like to do it. So obviously there's always good things about symmetry. So for example, if you ever do any uh, dual style things, uh, so for example, like, you know, if you use two nunchucks, for example, or two commas, or anything like that, it's always good to practice both sides so that your uh, non-dominant hand is as good as your dominant hand. Again, the premise behind that is potentially like if you uh, damage your dominant hand, you can still do something with your non-dominant hand. However, that's more obvious and I don't think you need a full, full video to kind of break that one down. Uh, so obviously do that, right? So like if you're, especially if you're training in a style that uses two hands, make sure you definitely train up your non-dominant hand. Uh, what I usually do is I like, train this one up for every three. I do my non-dominant hand compared to my dominant hand because this usually takes some time to catch up. But once it starts to kind of get a little bit more even, then like two to one and then one to one eventually. The direction from which I'm coming is mostly from a, uh, a teacher perspective as opposed to a student perspective. However, uh, it does absolutely work for a student because it ultimately is going to work the same thing. So to kind of recap how we generally learn forms, right, so we learn the basic mechanics first, right? So we see monkey see, monkey do. We just go through the motions until they're uh, more or less muscle memory. From there, we usually kind of add more detail, like so that could be like the application of techniques. It could be like, oh, let's fix the stances a little bit more. Let's work on the synchrony and stuff like that. We do that for a while and then it eventually becomes uh, muscle memory once again. Now that can happen infinitely. And in fact, it does happen infinitely. There's always something more you can always tweak in a form, whether it's a new perspective or it's like, oh, my stances, looking at a mirror, my stances, not as good as I thought they were. So let me go back and uh, nail down those stances. Uh, however, uh, so that is like the general process of how we usually do it. Something that I recommend is actually starting to train your, uh, your non-dominant side. And we'll kind of see what I'm talking about there. Long and short of it is, especially if you've been doing a form or a set of forms for a very long time, uh, and especially if you're starting to like try to learn how to teach it again, training to do mirror image is an excellent way to go. So for example, and this is gonna make me look very silly because uh, this is actually the one portion I have really been doing a lot. So let's take something that we take for granted as swordsman, drawing the sword. Right, that, that hopefully is a given, right? So it's like, okay, I've done this, I could, I think I can say thousands. I can probably, maybe, we'll see, right? A, a lot of times, right? So like, if I'm like just looking at you, you know, I have my, you know, generic stance, I have my thing at the ready, all I need to do is break the seal, grab, draw, and we're in defense. Same thing with our put away. We have a lot of different ways of putting the sword away, but very relatively smooth, like not very noisy, I got it, right? However, so especially with people uh, who are either new to teaching or they're teaching something relatively advanced, uh, or this, this is very, very new for you to be teaching, let's try doing it mirror image. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna force us to break it down as if we are a beginner, uh, which is always a great position to be in because that means you get to see things from a fresh perspective, right? So in a very non-elegant way, I'm gonna switch this to my other side and we're gonna try, try from here. Now, obviously this sword is not meant to be on the, uh, on the right hip because the, the node is on the inside and that limits the amount I can pull back. Uh, however, by doing mirror image, again, so now I'm gonna to try to use my non-dominant hand, I am a lot more aware of how a beginner would feel. So like, oh, my thumb, is on the guard, but maybe feels a little bit weird. My, uh, the, the butt of the sword is more or less in uh, my center line here. Okay, let's actually try to draw. So noticing, I would now want my, uh, my that's my left, my left foot forward, uh, because I usually would have um, the opposite hip back, so it's easier to draw. Uh, and there's also theories about having the right, uh, the left back because your heart's on the left side a little bit more. Uh, however, it's like, okay, Break the seal, I know how to do that. Grab, again, thinking about pinky ring middle. As I draw forward, I'm also trying to pull back and try and do all of these things, all of these things, all of these things, uh, as well as my normal side. 
So then we're here, <laughs> grabbing a uh, reverse grip like this is uh, incredibly awkward, especially if you've been doing it for uh, 17 plus years, but like, okay, so now I'm here, the put away is really gonna be fun. So this is gonna be, again, breaking it down. Like, okay, first of all, like what style do I wanna be teaching it in? Like, okay, let's do like the, the standard, like kind of like halfway style. So you can focus if you want to, grabbing the, the scabbard, again, noticing how you're grabbing it, right? Because your, your muscle memory on the other side is like, okay, middle finger kind of covering the mouth and you can do all that kind of stuff. Bring it in, trying to use your left hand as much as you can, struggle a little bit for the camera, and we're back in, using the thumb to seal, coming back in, forgetting to bring your other foot back as you do so, right? So uh, this is a really, really good way for uh, someone who's been doing this for a very long time to break the, first of all, break the rhythm, which is always good, um, because that gives you opportunity to kind of like break and then grow back out from it. Um, but this is a really excellent way for you to, again, break things down. Now, obviously, that's excellent for basics, right? So especially, again, if you're teaching you know, new people, you kind of get back in that mindset. This is also very good for if you have forms or kata, doing it that way as well. So what I personally do, and this is what I've been doing for the past couple of months, kind of get myself better at this, is so most of my forms are predominantly two-handed. Okay, uh, first level is to do it one-handed. Right? Now that's very, very weird for many forms, uh, but there are some styles that are that kind of you know, lend themselves to it quite nicely. Uh, if you are coming to us from a gumdo background, uh, the Yedo form is actually very, very good to start off with one hand. Um, so try that one-handed and try to do it mirror imaged with your, with your non-dominant hand. So for us, I'm just gonna assume left is non-dominant because uh, all of, at least, for Gumda at least, it's all right uh, right on top kind of guard. I believe that's very similar for Yaido and other styles as well. Uh, so let's just take this as an example. I'm boring, I'm gonna choose my favorite. So Yaido three, right? So I'm gonna try this four different ways. So one, standard, you know, most for the most part two-handed, uh, then right hand, then left hand, and I haven't really done this much and we'll find out how it works on camera, but I'll do it full reversal. So left hand on top, right hand on bottom. But if we take a look, right? So I'm not gonna do the whole thing because that'll get me in trouble, uh, but starting off with just the very, very beginning, I'm gonna draw behind us, Aya and all that fun stuff. Block, cross, down, staying allegedly nice and low, hook, up, cut. Okay, not too crazy, right? So the, the easy next step is one-handed. Most of that is very intuitive right-handed, right? So it's like, okay, draw low. You can keep your hand on the scabbard if you want to use this as like a counterbalance of some sort, you can. Um, I like to have it up here just because we can have our block, our cut, our cut, back, sweep, up, cut. Not too bad. So I could actually draw from the left-hand side. That's gonna be, oh no, I've done this in a weird order. So now I actually need to practice uh, our left hand put away. Isn't that fun? So from here, <laughs> we're gonna try to cut behind us and back. So one, two, three, back, hook, up, cut. Full reversal, right? So from here, I'm gonna draw, cut, two-handed. <laughs> one, two, three, up, sweep, up, back. And then our fancy little chakam. Again, always good to practice all of the, all the intricacies there. So that's our example. But that's the idea, right? So you can do this with any form, just some forms are gonna be incredibly awkward. So again, I recommend this, especially for people who are getting ready to teach it. It is also an excellent way for, especially if you're like, <laughs> I'll say like maybe, halfway or three quarters of the way uh, through like a testing cycle, for example. This is an excellent way for you to, again, break it down, really make sure you understand the form as well as you do, uh, because if you don't understand the form, it's gonna show, <laughs> it's gonna show pretty hard. Uh, so this is an excellent way for you to, again, almost like relearn the form, make sure you understand everything that's going on, because now you have to kind of explain to yourself what's going on, but with that, Make sure you stay safe, stay humble, and keep training.